What is going on to all my TV fans out there and welcome back to my channel. We are here today to discuss the new horror series from Mike Flanagan by the name of The Midnight Club. Now we're going to pivot over to the spoiler portion. So I'm, I will warn you all, we're going to be talking spoilers and particularly the 10th episode, which was titled Midnight. We're going to talk about the, the reveals, the ending, all that stuff here. So you have been warned. I'm going to probably clip this video out and make it a separate video, kind of like an ending explain type of thing. So with all that being said, spoilers. Boys ahead, we're talking about the last episode, which again was titled Midnight. Now, one of the things I want to mention that I couldn't really talk about in the spoiler free portion is the idea of the ghost was fascinating. Again, I didn't think the execution was all that great and scary, like not at all. Like the designs and the jump scares were not effective. But to me, the metaphor of the ghost was really unique because I don't know if you all noticed, the only time the character saw the ghost is when they were about to die. Think of it as Anya, who we talked about in the spoiler-free portion, didn't like her at first, but ended up loving her, especially when she had her solo episode. I think it was episode seven when she was kind of like in limbo, life and death, and she was like listening to the radio. All that stuff was fantastic. But when you go into the idea of these ghosts only appearing when they were going to die, that was like, again, the metaphor of death. Their time was coming. Anya, uh, you think of all the all the characters that saw him was Anya, Kevin, he saw the ghost a lot because he's almost going to be dying soon, and also our lead character, Alanka, who her, that moment, which we'll talk about here in a second in the 10th episode, when she has her witch story and her mom, and she accepts death, we'll talk about that here in a second, that was a, a really good sentimental, emotional moment that I thought had a, a really good payoff, but again, the ghost, I like, again, the execution, which was scarier, which was more frightening, but again, the only time our characters saw the ghost is when they were going to meet death, which I thought was, again, was unique, but going into breaking down this 10th episode and talking about the ending so we open the episode we obviously know at this point in the series the identity of julia who she really was in the series and she goes to go meet regina ballard who allows her to stay with her for the week and they come up with the elaborate story that she told everyone that thinks that this place has these mysterious healing powers in the basement so we already know okay it was just a hoax or not a hoax but it was just part of their story to kind of create this narrative of creating this cult and creating this belief in this particular pace, which I'm like, whoa, that's kind of effed up on both their parts, right? But then going back into, at this point in the episode, everyone's saying their goodbye to Sandra, which I will say when we get that moment, which I think it was in episode seven or eight, when we find out that one of the kids or one of the teenagers from the Midnight Club was misdiagnosed and they're going to be leaving, Obviously, as the audience member, you've been thinking this whole time, first off, it's Alanka. She's she's the one that found this place in regards to she is the eyes into this world. We're following her. So the hero's journey of a certain extent that she's going to beat this terminal illness. Or you're thinking, wait a minute, maybe that ritual that she did actually worked and she's going to leave. But this caught me by surprise and ended up being Sandra, which was... I'll admit, it was emotional, man, because again, we're following Alanka. Of course, they built the other characters out, some more than others, but we think it's going to be Alanka, and when she finds out that it's Sandra, she's kind of like, no, Sandra, you know, it's not you, it's me, and then when she finds out, no, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow, that was very heartbreaking, and again, when they say the goodbyes and all that stuff, I didn't cry or anything at one point in this series, but it was emotional, but let me know how you all felt about that moment, and did you think it was going to be Alanka, or once... Dr. Stanton said it was a female. I was like, okay, it's only three characters left that are female, Alanka, uh, Nonsky, and, and Sandra. So let me know how you all took that in and if you got a little bit emotional when you found out who it was. But I will go back to Sandra, and I talked about in my spoiler-free portion, her story, her sinister story, was one of my favorites. The romance, black and white noir with the undertone of the hero being Spencer because, again, they had their conflict when she was talking about religion and obviously religious uh, different uh, followings don't believe, you know, that when you're gay, you're not going to go to heaven, you're evil and all that stuff. And we even get that payoff with Spencer's mom coming to the manor at the end. So, but her story was fantastic. And again, let me know, because of course we're talking spoilers now, what was your favorite story? Again, mine was Kevin, serial killer. I enjoyed the uh, Amesh story, the sci-fi time traveling story. And also, like I just mentioned, the black noir. Let me know some of your favorites. So, Moving on to kind of breaking down the final moments, again, the question at hand when you're watching the show is, are these ghosts, is there a real afterlife, and all that stuff is still questionable until we get this moment. Anya's friend, her childhood friend, comes to go pick up her, her belongings, and he finds the ballerina. 
And the reveal is the ballerina's leg, which was again kind of a metaphor and symbolism to her character, it was broken, but then it was fixed. She didn't fix that when she was alive. She fixed that from the afterlife, which if you go back to the very beginning of the show, if one of us die, we have to give us a symbol or give you all something to know that we're in the afterlife. So she did that from the afterlife. So I kind of really enjoyed that moment, especially, like I said, off the bat, Anya, I'm like, yo, she is being a little bit too rude to our main character. But again, you learn why, why she's so standoffish, why she's so protective of her friends, and especially when you get her story. So... That was a good moment. That was uh, that was some of the shiny moments of this finale because a lot of the stuff to me just didn't really, conclusion just didn't really stick the landing for me. But that brings us to wrapping up our final stories, which one of the stories had a bad ending, which the, the crew even admits, and the other one had a, a better emotional moment, which is Kevin finally finishes his story, which was personally my favorite story up until the ending. But his whole, I can't kill Sheila, his, his great-great-grandfather, or even decades ago, generations ago, they had the little cult thing where they're possessed and they have to kill to feed this entity and he ultimately doesn't he spares Sheila's life she hits him over the head but puts him into the uh you know I think it was an asylum but again the overarching theme was you know obviously he killed his girlfriend metaphorically and he saved Sheila because obviously in reality he was in love with well not in love but he really had feelings for uh, Alanka so again knowing that and also too his story of being kind of the cool kid and all the different stuff and like all these stories, again, whatever the incident was, the, whatever it was murdering or whatever, time travel, it all played into those characters, which again, I talked about it, the best elements of this show was the stories within the story. It was the Midnight Club stories that was just way more appealing, way more entertaining, more may had way more depth and payoffs than the actual, I don't want to say reality because it's a fake show, but the reality of the manor and the ghost and the mystery of the manor, those stories were fantastic. The ending wasn't great for Kevin's story, I will admit, and again, the club even admits it, but that brings us to the conclusion of Alanka's story with her mother and the witchcraft and not changing things, remember? Her determination to survive, she was so gun-ho on surviving, saving her friends in this particular story, all for it to, as they say, bounce back or push back the time, and it, and it got her. She ended up sacrificing herself for, you know, uh, in this particular story, uh, Alanka, her friend, but that ties back into her story as she's going to the afterlife. That was when the character accepted that she's going to die. So again, I didn't cry at any point, but I did say, man, that's that was a good one of the few, in my opinion. One of the few emotional payoffs was Alanka's story, and in particularly that particular story of her accepting death. Let me know what you all thought about that. But we're here to talk about the ending, and here is the ending here. So as we're wrapping up the show, see Dr. Stanton locking up the manor, uh, Brightcliff. She walks past the the picture of the, the guy that created Stanley in, what was it, 1868. She goes into her room. She takes off her wig, and she has that symbol for the cult, which is the big reveal that she is the daughter, Regina Ballard, who went by the name of Athena. So she is the daughter, and if, it, it lines up, because if you even think about it, when we saw their backstory, it was 1931, 1930 or so, and remember, we're in 1994, so... If she was, let's say, 14, 15, when we first were introduced to her in that flashback, flash forward to, what, 1994, she's like 70 years old, 73, 74, 75, so it lines up perfectly, and again, it ties back into why she was so gun ho on not allowing Julia to come in and not believing in these rituals because she's already experienced it firsthand with her mother doing all those things that killed all those people. So she's the daughter. She's Athena. She is, you know, Dr. Stad, and it makes so much sense why she created this and why she doesn't want all those people to kind of clout the idea of these supernatural things giving you more health. So that was an interesting reveal. But my question is, is this a season two type of ending like are we going to get more i don't think so because again if you see mike flanagan's previous work they're just one and done they're limited miniseries but we've never had a series i guess really in on that type of an open-ended thing like okay are we going to get any more of the the story but again i think about midnight mass that kind of had it like a I don't say cliffhanger, but you didn't know if the vampire, uh, spoiler here for that show, which you should watch that if you haven't, but spoiler for Midnight Mass, when the vampire went away, the vampire died. They didn't explicitly show you that, but we know that when the light comes out and they had a very kind of way to show you that the vampire didn't live on. But, you know, that story to me had a more conclusion to it versus this one kind of was, I don't say open-ended, but I'm like, oh, there's maybe more to explore there. But 
most likely not because we know Mike Flanagan likes to do. He's already working on his next show, which I can't think of the name of it right now. But that's the ending. She is the daughter, and we kind of understand, again, why she did the things that she did. So overall, as far as the finale goes, it had its good moments, you know, had its emotional payoff for Alanka and, and, you know, the Kevin story. But overall, man, I just wish that the mystery of it all was just a little bit, was on the same level as those stories. So that's my spoiler ending explained for episode 10, the finale, series finale of The Midnight Club, which was titled Midnight. Let me know what you all thought about the ending. Let me know if you're still here, your thoughts on the series overall. Again, I'm clipping this out to be a separate video. So if you haven't already, check out my non-spoiler review of the show, which can be found on the channel. But again, let me know what you thought of the ending, favorite moments, favorite characters, favorite story. Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you're still here, again, knowing that this is part of a bigger video, put a... Let's see, let's put a put the book emoji in the comments, kind of tying it into the Midnight Club. They were in the library. Put a book in the chat now or in the uh, comments below if you stuck around to this point of video. I thank you so much for watching this video. If you can, just before you all leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You all have been awesome. Hope you're staying safe, and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown.